Welcome to Tennis Spin, where we put our spin on your tennis. My buddy Eugene was like, do you know this racket? TXP Pro. And I'm like, dang, that brings me back to a long freaking time ago. <laughs> Stay tuned. All right, coffee sponsor of today is Charles. Charles writes, this is Charles in San Antonio. Greetings, you have an awesome channel, Harry. The videos are informative and entertaining, thanks to you. What are some strings and tensions you recommend for the Wilson Clash version one? Also, can you give a shout out to my tennis buddy, Keith? He enjoys your channel as well. Thanks and keep up the great work. Oh, thank you, Charles. I appreciate you. Um, and shout out to tennis buddy Keith. So strings for Clash version one. You know, I've been saying smart forever and unfortunately smart is over smarted itself and is gone now. <laughs> So I guess it wasn't smart enough to hang out and be around for the life of the clash. Um, I mean, if you want something soft in that kind of realm of um, smart, I would say element, like get the Luxlon element in like a one, two, five or one, three, oh, depending on if you break strings, they even make an element rough. Um, I personally like the uh, the confidential. I know I push it so much, but I just love the way it feels and how predictable it is. But definitely on the softer side, try Element. Uh, if you don't use a synthetic, if you don't use a poly, I mean, um, try like a head velocity or gamma professional spin or something like that. Those are great. Um, tension 48, no more than 52 is what I definitely recommend. Okay, thank you for the coffee, Charles. Uh, if you wanna be my coffee sponsor of the day, network is buymeacoffee.com forward slash tennis spin. Wanna just hook up the channel? Don't care about my coffee? Super thanks is the way, link is below. Thank you guys so, so much. All right, so my buddy Eugene, basically said have you seen this before and i said yeah i used to see it at the tennis shop back in high school and i remember this sitting on the hook at don sherwood's golf and tennis world out in san francisco um, i never really looked too much at it um, i just knew the the line was this racket um, coach rob's racket which was kind of tealish there was a green one called a Elite Pro, which I had that was super, super flexy. Um, and, but this was the flagship uh, TXP Pro. So this was the predecessor to the head prestige that we have today. And as you see, it has the capped grommets. This was the first racket to have capped grommets. Head size is 89.5, so 89.5 square inches. Um, you can tell, look at that head, look at that head shape, perfect egg kind of a shape. My buddy Eugene added lead to it. Made in America, guys. Can you believe that? This was still made in Colorado when uh, you know, when, man, it was 1987. So it's come and traveled a far, far way from then until now. Now, these rackets are all made in China. Uh, you can see by the flag there. We got the head with the AMF symbol there. Do you remember head and AMF were together? I'll bet a lot of you don't. Um, but I, all I remember were these rackets were hard to to swing. I mean, obviously I was a lazy kid and I'd Hey 
Hey, Coach. What's up, Barry? What you got there today? Oh, just wanted to try out the new whiteout, and then obviously got my blackout with some new strings in there. So I want to test it out with you. Yeah, I'm down. I'm down. All right. Um, what you got there, Coach? Oh, well, I mean, if we're going to test out your rackets today, I thought we'd just test out my rackets today. What do you, what do you think? Sure, Coach. If you want that perfect coach or partner who is a racket junkie just like you, Play Your Court is the place. They have over 27,000 players for you to choose from. It's all at playyourcourt.com forward slash tennis school. really didn't want uh, to work very hard. So I, I played with an Ultra 2, I think, back when these were out, which was the stiffest racket back in the day. Um, but yeah, let's, uh, let's take it on the court since uh, he lent it to me. We'll see who's available and try it out. 1820 pattern, guys, with a hybrid poly synthetic. All right, see you on the court. All right, fun racket we just got off the court with Eugene's. This is Eugene's. He lent us this out of his own collection. Uh, TXP Pro yeah. by Head. So since you're a pro, talk to me about this pro. All right, I've, again, I'm going into this cold turkey. I don't really know much about this racket other than it is an 18 by 20, so it's definitely got more control. After hitting with it for you know a couple of hours, it is definitely a lot more on the control side, less power. So for those who kind of got a big swing, you really need to follow through with this to get more power out of it. It's a little bit heavier for me after hitting with it for a little bit. You gotta have to really make sure that you've got to have to have really good solid found foundation and technique in the way that you're hitting with it. Other than that, it's really interesting to see how Head made this beam really small and it does cut through nicely in the air. So I can definitely see how it appeals to, you know, players back back in the day from playing with this racket compared to nowadays too as well. So yeah, I'd like to hear more about the specs from Harry. It is a small head size too as well, that's what I know. So obviously you got to really time it in that sweet spot. So nice. So coach, the characteristics of his racket is control, you two mentioned control flex Ooh, flex yeah a lot of flex because mm. it's the original thin beam racket mm. but it had enough power because if you remember we drove the ball with a continental grip or eastern grip back in the day mm. so this kind of catered to that kind of a swing okay um 1820 right easier for you know flat hitters to keep the ball in play. Mm. Um, Eugene actually added a lot of lead to this. And when you went like this, check it out. Why is this not doing this with all that lead? I know. Right? It's just even heavier down here. So so that means it was pretty head light just so yeah. that you could drive through the ball. Yeah. Um, the caps, the cap guard was the first ever in, in, uh, in the headline to receive it. Mm -hmm. um, I mean, great, great stick, actually. I loved how it played. I loved how it felt. Obviously, my balls fell short just because I'm not stepping into it. I'm sure you felt the same thing. Like, yep. you really had to lay into the ball pretty well and have a solid foundation to, to strike the ball solidly to make the ball go. Yeah, it wasn't going to go anywhere unless you <laughs> actually took a swing at it. Right. So, um, great racket. So, but you said this was a precursor to what racket? Uh, the uh, first head prestige. Ooh. So that's why it's called Pro. Mm. You know, head they called it Pro. TXP Pro, right? Head prestige. So Pro. the name after this was Head Prestige. Whoa. After this. All right. 
pretty cool. Yeah, very cool. What else? Remember, look at that AMF. What? They don't put that anymore on the head. That's because they're not owned by AMF anymore. That's nuts. Yeah, they don't make them in the USA anymore. No, no. Supposedly they were made in Colorado. That's what I heard. What? Where yeah. they made now? Well, went to Austria. Engineered in Austria, but made in China. No, no, they are actually made in Austria, oh, okay. and then Czech Republic, now now China. Yeah, China. So China, where we were made. Yes, he was. That was made in USA. Oh. Actually, I just say it because it looked like it. Where were you made? Here too. Oh, okay. Well, made in USA. <laughs> just like this racket. <laughs> Coach Ching, where can they find you? They can find me at CV Chen Tennis. And that's it for you. Guys, thank you for watching Tennis Spin, where we put our spin on your tennis.